this video, we're going to use JavaScript, just plain vanilla JavaScript, in order to open up this JSON file and display the contents of it in this HTML file. So no D3, no jQuery, no tabletop, none of that stuff. It's pretty simple, but there are a couple tricks to it. Uh, so first off, when you read in an external file in a modern browser, you're going to use something called fetch. Uh, and so you're gonna say fetch. What file do I want to fetch? What file do I want to get? I am after samplefile.json. So I'm gonna say fetch sample-file.json. Note that my index file and my samplefile.json are in the same folder. So it's gonna make things a little bit easier. Uh, fetching it is just not gonna do anything by itself. I can look at the page so I can you know, show you that it doesn't do anything. Let's see, we are in development videos, this one right here. So I'm gonna open up this index file and you'll see nothing shows up. Uh, anytime you're working with JavaScript and you wanna kinda see what's going on, see if there are any errors, things like that, you're interested in opening up uh, the JavaScript console, which you can access by going to view developer uh, JavaScript console or command control or command option J. So I'm gonna hold down command option J and it will open up this for me here. I'm gonna refresh and it's gonna yell at me and it's gonna say URL scheme must be HTTP or HTTPS for cores request. And you're like, I don't know what very many of those things mean. Uh, you do know HTTP or HTTPS, right? Usually it shows up up here in your browser. Now, when we are just opening up a file, uh, the browser deals with things differently than if we're visiting them on the web. It won't let this file, because we are opening it up, as a file, it won't let it access anything else on the computer. It's trying to protect you from opening up a bad HTML file that you know grabs all your passwords.txt and then sends them to some server somewhere. So what we need to do is we need to trick the computer into doing HTTP or HTTPS here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna run a Python command on the terminal. So you can do this with Python 2, Python 3, you can do it with JavaScript, things like that. Um, we're gonna be doing it with Python 3 because that's the version of Python I have installed. And the command that we run is python-m HTTP server. And what that will do is it will start a web server on my computer right here. So what I can do, instead of going to blah, 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 I go to localhost 8000 forward slash index.html, that's the name of my file. And this is my web page. If you want to get, be proven that this is the web page, uh, I will add, this is the web page. I will save it. I will refresh here. And now I have, uh, it's coming in as HTTP or HTTPS, which is why it doesn't show file over here anymore. Uh, and now we're no longer getting that error. But what we want to do is we want to take this file and display it on the page. Now, fetch uses something called promises that I don't have an infinite amount of time to talk about. All you need to know is once you fetch that file, then I want you to do something else. What is it that I want you to do? I want you to parse the JSON. Because this is a JSON file and JSON is built into JavaScript, uh, JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, this will automatically turn this, instead of being a text file, into something that JavaScript can understand. And we wanna say, okay, well, after you're done converting it into JSON, then I want you to do something else to it. You say, what are we gonna do with it? Let's just look at it. Let's just data.log. And you say, wait, what's all this this fat arrow here, and why do you have brackets here and not brackets here? And I say, just ignore it, it's fine, you'll be okay. Just know that anything you want to do with that data, we're gonna do between these two brackets. So I'm gonna refresh this page, and there we go, we see 
sentence. So this is our object that we read in, console.log data. It has a sentence. If we do data.sentence, save it, refresh, we will just see this is a sample local file. Uh, if we want to put this into debug, we can say, hey, document, go out and grab the thing with the ID of debug and set the inner text to be the same thing, data dot sentence. I'm going to save, I'm going to refresh, and there we go. Magically, we have taken that file and we are displaying it on the page. Uh, if you had other kind of JSON stuff in there, you could do loops, stuff like that. Uh, not too complicated. And since you stayed this long, I might as well explain what's going on here. If I say response, response, JSON. Um, what this is, is it's the same thing as function response return response.json. That's all it is. It's just the modern way of writing a JavaScript function, kind of. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, this is how you read in a JSON file and then use the data from that JSON file and use it to update the page. If you tried to update this file, uh, maybe let's say you put this file somewhere else on the internet, you're gonna start to run into some other problems. So be on the lookout for other videos from me about how to automatically upload those files to Amazon Web Services S3 and set it so you can access it around, not around the world, whatever. You got it, you're fine, you're good.